Good morning, um, church family. It's uh, another blessed day that God gave us this morning. And I'd like to thank God and for giving us the opportunity to be together this morning to worship Him in truth and spirit and you know, share um, some lessons that, um, um, that are uh, beneficial for our soul and to our lives. And I would like to thank um, especially the elders and uh, the congregation for giving me the opportunity to share um, this message to you this morning. Uh, but first, I would like to uh, say a little prayer before we uh, start with the lesson. Let us pray. Oh, dear Heavenly God, we thank you for this morning, for the another day of life that you've given us a chance to a chance to see your wonders and your work into our lives. We thank you for the opportunity to to worship you in spirit and in truth that um, uh, in unity we uh, worship you, Father God. Thank you so much for this opportunity and thank you so much for your son who made all of these things possible. We pray that you'll prepare our hearts and our mind for the lesson this morning and hoping, Father God, that it will enlighten some of the um, dark spots in our lives and and we these things we we do according to your will. Thank you, Lord, for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Um, the lesson this morning is uh, uh, taken from uh, the book of Psalms, uh, chapter 42. It has a title in the, um, in the New International Version. It says, Why are you cast down, O my soul? Psalms 42, uh, to get a background of this uh, study this morning, we will take a closer look about spiritual depression as presented by the writers of Psalms 42. These uh, Psalms were written by the sons of Korah. Uh, the sons of Korah were sons of Moses, nephew. Uh, his name is Korah. And the stories of Korah is found in Numbers 16, uh, 31 to 33, where Korah led the revolt against Moses and then he died alone with his co-conspirators when God caused the earth to open her mouth and swallow him and all that pertained to them. Anyway, uh, Korah's children did not die. Some of them became porters, uh, porters of the temple, which uh, are also the gatekeepers or the caretakers of the temple. We can see that in First Chronicle, Chronicles 9, verses 17 uh, 19 or Leviticus chapter 2, verse 5. The sons of Korah were the priests that David took with him uh, when he was running away from his son Absalom. Uh, they were in charge of the music ministry of the temple. They were the choirs of the temple. And um, so that is the background of our study this morning. Um, uh, originally, I... I selected chapters 42 and 43, uh, but I as chapter 43 is a, just a continuation of chapter 42, and the and the message is the same. So I just edited it into one chapter, which could um, sum up our study this morning. So the background uh, this is written with the theme of spiritual depression. Um, I'm hoping that our lesson this morning won't be a depressing, will, will not be on a depressing mode. We're just here this morning to analyze these things and see the reality of it that goes out into our spiritual lives every day. Um, spiritual depression is when a person struggles with God to make sense of the experiences he's been having in his life. It is when your zest in life vanished, that simple tasks are like impossible demands. 
to have your spiritual energy gone, to have words like hope and joy, just mere words and mean nothing. A few days after my father passed, I just found myself, I just suddenly tell myself that it seems that nothing makes sense right now. It was the time when you really feel the loss, that it shakes you in your inner core. I got an opportunity to talk to one of my uncles. I remember telling him that sometimes life becomes meaningless knowing that you're going to pass away anyway. For a moment, I forgot about God. For a moment, I was on my way to depression. In our lingo today, in our language, we call it just having a bad day. Or you're just having the blues. Or people just call it simply depressed. In the ancient days, they call it the dark night of the soul. Our own spiritual struggle, experience an anxiety that leads to depression. When we are exposed to catastrophic events that make us feel this way. There are reasons for this. But there are also remedies for this. But first, let us take a closer look at the reality of it. There are three spiritual flaws or mistakes with regards to spiritual depression. Number one, they said that it's all in your head. Yes, that's true. It's all in your head, but it's just your imagination. No, it is not just your imagination. According to the latest survey of the Christian community, 9% of our Christian community are struggling with hopelessness that leads to depression. 3% are in severe form of depression. Number two, they said if you are a Christian, you should never be depressed. Well, if you read the book of Psalms, the book of Jeremiah, the book of Ezekiel, Hosea, and so on and so forth, all of these represents depressive solutions. Uh, situations that might discourage you. They said, just come to Jesus and everything will be fine. True, but actually coming to Jesus make the, war, make the road more tougher, more rougher, rougher. Matthew 16, 24 says, whoever wants to be my disciple, Jesus said, you must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. By the way, it says, whoever wants to be my disciple, disciples and Christians are the same. In the olden days, they called them disciples. Disciples are the followers of Christ. Disciples are the Christians. And Christians are disciples. You must remember that. Number three. Say, if you are depressed, you are unspiritual or immature. And if you believe that, you will have a hard time dealing with the Bible, for it's full of flawed men. Examples of people in the Bible that experience spiritual depression. David, Psalm 617. Paul, 2 Corinthians 1.8. Jesus himself. Luke 22, 44. Elijah, 1 King 19, 1 to 5, when he was running away from Jezebel. Hob, when he cursed his birth. Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, and on and on. These three beliefs and the mistakes are mistakes and depression. Brothers and sisters, it's real. From the Psalms that we read, thank you very much, Brother Carlos, for reading 
the scripture this morning, there are reasons for depression. Number one, expectation. When you expect something to happen and it never happens, these are unfulfilled expectations. Verse 1 and 3 says on our text this morning, As the deer pants for streams of water, for my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When I go, when can I go and meet with you, meet with, meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while men say to me all day long, Where is your God? Like the deer, thirsty for water and panting for refreshment, finding relief. I would like to thank Brother Charles for the song this morning. And they're great, sir, and I appreciate it. And, and the song before the message. It's exactly what it says, what it says. Proverbs 13, 12 says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. At this moment, the sons of Korah, at this moment, the sons of Korah's purpose in life is to involve in the public worship of Israel. But now, all of a sudden, Everything just stopped. They, they felt they lost their purpose in life. Whenever our purpose in life is challenged, whenever our usefulness in life is challenged, we become susceptible to spiritual depression. There are so many things that happen in our lives that sometimes we feel that our purpose is being challenged. Our usefulness is being challenged. Number two, criticism. You are criticized, you are mocked because of your faith. On our uh, text this morning, it says, where is your God? Verse three says, where is your God? Sometimes it is not just our faith. Sometimes you tell yourself that you are not worthy. Sometimes you criticize yourself for not being good for what you are. That overthinking that leads to anxiety. Anxiety builds depression. Taken from Proverbs 12, 25. It says, an anxious heart weighs a man down, but a kind word cheer him up. Sometimes we miss those kind words. Number three reason for being depressed or uh, for having spiritual depression, accumulation. It means one struggle after another struggle is the cumulative effect of many trials that just pile up. Verse 7 tells us this. It says, deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. Just like all the waters that are crashing down are falling over you. These are the struggles that we face every day. But sometimes a struggle comes one after the other. We uh, don't understand why that this is thing happening, but it is a cumulative effect that might cause us to be depressed. On 2 Corinthians 11, 23 to 28, Paul tells about his struggle, his prison times. His, he was flogged. He was severely beaten and exposed to death. And the words are again and again. He said, I experienced these things again and again. There are two authors who wrote a book about stress. It says, it, the book is called um, a Spiritual oh, uh, Executive Stress Manual. I'm sorry. The book is called the St Executive Stress Manual. And these two orders um, uh, assigned numbers in life's event. The things that happen in our life are designated by numbers. They call them life-changing units. Uh, example of this, on their book, 
It says, when you, when you uh, went into a divorce, there are 73 life-changing units that you will be gaining. When you lose a close family member, 63 life-changing units. Marital problems, 65 life-changing units. Marriage, 50 life-changing units. Being fired from your job, 47 life-changing units. Well, if you're going to look at marriage and being fired, they're just three points difference. I don't know why, but that's a joke. Retirement, 45 life-changing units. Pregnancy, 40 life-changing units, etc. Vacation, only 13. Christmas, 13. Going to jail, 63 life-changing units. A loss of a spouse is 100 life-changing units. The parameter is that in a year, according to the book, if you are in between the range of 200 to 300 life-changing units, you are set for a nervous breakdown or a deep, deep depression. So accumulation, accumulation, calamity after calamity. Year 2020 is full of this. First COVID-19, then we have the fire, we have typhoon, we have deaths, and so on and so forth. Number four reason, recollection. Just remembering the past, but doing it the wrong way. This is the wrong use of the past. Verse four says, the things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go with the multitude, leading the procession to the house of God with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. The sons of Korah were thinking about the good old days. But life doesn't always stay the same. Throwbacks and nostalgia is popular today. There is a huge attraction for the good old days. Does your past keep you from moving forward? How about the pain and the grief? How about the guilt and the shame? Leave them behind and move forward. The past could be a rather to guide you or an anchor to hold you down. Leave them behind and move forward. You can't change the past, brothers, sisters, but God can reshape the future to be better. Number five, reason for being depressed, spiritual depression, preoccupation. Preoccupation mostly preoccupied by yourself. If you look at the Psalms that we read, it's you are in a, we can look at that his plans are not being fulfilled. His life is crashing down. His past has been changed. Remember, do you notice the his and all looking to ourselves? Self-centeredness will be also a cause or a reason for depression. In our world today, it is a me, myself, and I world that we are living in. That's why the word selfie was invented. can't even imagine that the selfie is a word now. Anyway, those are the reasons for depression, for spiritual depression. These are real. Forget about it. But we have a remedy for them. And how will you filter this kind of thinking? We have a remedy. The remedy is to replace. Replace is to take something out and put something in. Some people, unfortunately, when they go into such kind of depression, some people try to drink or smoke something, whatever they would that could make them numb. That's going to be temporary. That's why we have alcoholism and addiction to treat also. Some people go to therapy and doctors. I don't say that. I'm not saying that it is not good to go to the doctors and therapy. These are good. These are good uh, measures too. But sometimes we end up feeling no guilt. Sometimes we end up 
dealing with substance abuse because of the diagnosis and the prescriptions that we get. Some people, they said they watch a lot of TV, but I don't think that would help too. The remedy is to replace. Take something out and put something in. I know that sometimes it's easy to say, but truly hard to follow through. But with the faith that is in you, you will overcome. Remember our song, Faith is the Victory? Matthew 17, 20 and 21 says, With a little faith, you can move the mountain. Nothing is impossible for you. So replace. Replace your thoughts with his truth. This is number one. Replace your thoughts with his truth. Verses, verse 5 of chapter 42, he's talking about himself. Says, why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? And then he said, put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. He's talking to himself, says, hey, you, yeah, I'm talking to you. Put your hope in God. Sometimes we must talk to ourselves instead of letting ourselves talk to us. Most of our unhappiness in life is due to the fact that we are always listening to ourselves instead of talking to ourselves. The New Testament tells us about taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5, it says, We demolish arguments and every pretensions that sets itself against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Romans 12, 2 says, this is the form of renewing our minds. I told a brother one time that when I wake up in the morning, I feel some fear. Remember waking up in the morning, feeling where are you going to fall next? Feeling what will the day of this world bring to you today? I remember Brother Carlos' message on the Wednesday Bible class about fear. Replace fear with the truth. Look for the answers in the scriptures. Psalm 119, 105 says, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Do you walk in darkness, my brother? My sister, read your Bible. You'll find light. And I guarantee you, you'll find light. Replace yourself with God. Number two. We should replace ourselves with God. I know that it is human nature to be self-absorbed in suffering. But at some point, you have to bring God into the picture. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 9 says, But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God. Verse 8 and 9 on the Psalms that we read, the writer is now focusing from the inward to upward. He realized God's providence looking upward in prayer, recognizing that God is our rock, a stable foundation, and never be shaken. Remember Matthew 28, Jesus says, Come to me, all of you who are weary, and I will give you rest. I read this, uh, I read this story from a magazine one time about a Nazi camp survivor, and she quoted this, said, Look around you, and be distressed, look within you, and be depressed, look to Jesus, and be addressed. Your outlook is determined by your outlook, and the psalmist look up. There is a story about Martin Luther and his wife Katie. Once, when Martin was so depressed, 
and none of his, his wife Katie advice would help. Katie put on a black dress. Luther noticed it and asked, Are you going to a funeral? He said. Katie replied, No. But seems you act like God is dead. I wanted to join you in your mourning. Luther got the message and recovered. He made a sign in his study that says he lives, always reminding him that our God is alive and working in our lives. Remember when Daniel was set to the lion's den and God sent his angels to shut the mouth of the lion? Even King Darius of Babylon wrote to the people all over the nation. Daniel 6.26 says, Nations and men of every language, I make a decree that in all the dominion of my kingdom, men are to fear and tremble before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and enduring forever. For his kingdom is one which will not be destroyed, and his dominion will be forever. Replace your past with your future. This is in connection to the item number four about recollection, some reasons for depression. Instead of looking at the past, it is better to look at the future. Isn't it better to look at the future? Tell yourself that there is an end to this. The night won't be that long for the day is coming. Better days are on their way because God will take care of you. Let go and let God. Looking up with hope. When, uh, when things seem to be against you, it may be because your vision is obscure and unclear by the past. When you look at your situation from a heavenly perspective, all these things may be for you. They just haven't been put together yet. Just like looking at the jigsaw puzzle. Not assembled yet, but in the end, it will paint you a very beautiful picture. Looking ahead, that life continues to move and God will get you through the tough times. There is hope for the future. Christ is the hope. The brighter tomorrow and, and the God of love always prevail. There is the future. That is the future. The gospel of Christ is the future. My challenge to you, brothers and sisters, that in Christ, that is not to allow your past to control Jesus Christ. Then you won't need the past as an excuse anymore. John 14, 1, 3 says, Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In the Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back. And take you to be with me so that you may, that you also may be where I am. So to conclude. Yes, brothers and sisters, dealing with our struggles due to spiritual depression is a real condition. If you are in the midst of the dark night of the soul. As a Christian brother or sister, you are not a failure. You are a fellow member of the human race. Telling you, you are not a failure. So why do bad things happen to God people? To good people? Why do bad things happen to good people? This is a million dollar question being asked all the time. To answer that, one needs to know the unknowable which is the mind of God. Psalms 46, 10 says, Be still, be still, and know that I am God. Sometimes trials and tragedies are difficult to understand. That's why 
I came to the point where I told myself that things don't mean anything anymore to me right now and at the moment. But if one has faith, all things have meaning. And thank God for remembering my faith. So why does the loving God allow suffering to happen? Does God want us to suffer? Remember, we pray for strength. Romans 5, 3, 4. Paul wrote, suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. We pray for strength. We ask for strength. And God gave us difficulties to make us stronger. We ask for wisdom. James 1, 5. But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. We ask for wisdom. God gave us problems to solve. We ask for courage. We pray for courage. Psalms 46, 1, 3. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and through the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters rolls and be troubled, though the mountain shakes with its swelling. We ask for courage. God gave us dangers to overcome. We ask for love. God gave us troubled people to help. First Peter 4, 8 says, Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sin. We received nothing we wanted, yet we received everything we needed. In the next few days, we will be celebrating Thanksgiving Day. So many blessings to be thankful about. But when whatever situations we are in now, we should have that Thanksgiving in our heart always. For the promise that He will never leave us nor forsake us, our heart should always be praising Him with Thanksgiving. We ask for this, strength, wisdom, courage, and love. These are answered prayers that we take for granted. Sometimes these are the things that are shaping our character, and we only need to acknowledge them. Remember Romans 8.28, all things, all things work together for good to them who love God, to them who called according to His purpose. Sometimes we just need to listen. God answers us. With the whisper, with the whisper. That's why he said, He said, Seek me, seek me, and you will find me. If you are not Christian yet, what are you waiting for? He's the only, He's the only peace that can calm our weary souls. These are just few of our answered prayers that we can recall. Actually, we prayed for life too. He gave us life abundantly. John 10.10, 10, I came that you may have life and have it abundantly, he said. So, brother, what are you waiting for? Christ is the only peace that can calm your weary soul. If you'd like to learn more about Jesus Christ and His good news and learn more why your salvation is important, let us know. Email or call or text. We can arrange a study for you. And if you decided to follow Jesus right now, confess your sins and acknowledge that He is the Son of God and be faithful to Him till death. We could help you to be baptized to seal your decision. And Brothers and sisters, if you are in the dark night of your soul right now or just having the blues, we pray that you'll come back to your senses and look up to Jesus. He is the light in your darkness. He is your strength in your weakness. He is the rock of your salvation. It is going to be a rough road out there. But Jesus, but if Jesus is with you, you could go anywhere. Lastly, I'd like to share this. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 
God said, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, God said, choose life that you and your offspring may live. Choose life. Jesus is life. Choose Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. Brothers and sisters, that is the message this morning. And thank you so much for your kind attention. Appreciate it.